In this video, I'm going to explain how hearing aids actually treat hearing loss. Coming up. Hi, I'm Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, consider hitting the subscribe button. Hearing aids aren't the best treatment option for some types of hearing loss, but they are the best treatment option for most types of hearing loss. So whether or not you have hearing loss related to age or genetic factors or even noise exposure, treatment with hearing aids is usually your best and only treatment option, and hearing aids are really good at treating these types of hearing losses. But what are hearing aids actually doing? Well, contrary to popular belief, hearing aids don't just amplify all sounds. It's much more precise than that. Hearing aids have the capability of amplifying certain areas that you need and not amplifying other areas that you don't. Humans with normal hearing can hear sounds all the way down to 20 hertz, which is a very low pitch or low frequency sound, all the way up to 20,000 hertz, which is a high pitch or high frequency sound. You can kind of think of this like a piano keyboard. All of the keys on the left side of the keyboard are low pitch, and as you work your way up to the right side of the piano keyboard, you get to higher pitches. Most individuals with hearing loss will have a loss in some of these ranges, but not all of them. So when you're treating these individuals, you need to make sure that you amplify the areas correctly that you need and not amplify the areas that you don't. In order to illustrate this, let's take a look at an audiogram that we would obtain by giving you a hearing test. This audiogram shows the hearing thresholds of the right ear as indicated by the red circles. The lower you see these circles on the graph, the poorer the hearing is. Just like the piano I described earlier, low pitch sounds are on the left and gradually increase in pitch as we move to the right. In terms of severity, the hearing in this individual's right ear ranges from normal hearing in the low pitches to a moderate hearing loss in the high pitches. We would basically call this a high frequency hearing loss because virtually all of the hearing loss is isolated to the high frequency areas of the graph. An individual with this type of hearing loss typically reports being able to hear but has difficulty understanding speech. Understanding why this occurs is helpful when we can see speech sounds on the graph. Audiologists call this the speech banana. It illustrates where speech sounds reside in terms of frequency and intensity. As you can see, the vowel sounds are on the low frequency side of the graph. These sounds provide volume to speech. Consonant sounds are on the high frequency side of the graph. These sounds provide clarity to speech. Just think of it as vowels provide volume and consonants provide clarity. Any of these sounds that are above the O's on this graph can no longer be heard by the individual when spoken in normal speech. Basically, they do not even make it from your hearing organ up to your brain. This creates a situation where your brain attempts to fill in the gaps of what it is hearing. Sometimes it does a good job of this, other times it doesn't. However, there are three ways you can compensate for these missing sounds. Number one is watching a person's mouth move while they talk. Doing this will allow you to catch the speech cues off of their lips and help you fill in the gaps much better. The second way is having good context for what someone is talking about. If you're at the beach, it will be much easier for you to understand them talking about the sand and seashells, which have a lot of the sounds that you would typically be missing. The third way to compensate is using hearing aids to amplify the sounds that you're missing to make them accessible to your brain. For this particular hearing loss, you would want to use hearing aids to amplify the high frequency sounds, but leave the low frequency sounds alone. This will ensure that these sounds that were previously unavailable to the brain will now start making it there. If you do this with enough precision, you will hear the sounds you were missing without affecting the sounds that you were already able to hear. However, just because we can amplify these sounds and make them more audible doesn't mean that your brain will hear them clearly. This is why we also do word recognition testing. This testing allows us to see if your ear and brain are capable of correctly interpreting these amplified sounds. If you score a high percentage of these words correct during a hearing test, you will likely do well with hearing aids. If you score a low percentage of these words correctly, you will still have difficulty understanding speech even with the hearing aids program perfectly. So now you should have a better idea of what hearing aids are actually doing in order to help you if you have a hearing loss. They are designed to amplify the sounds that you need and make them accessible to your brain without affecting the sounds that you already hear well. 
However, the only way to ensure that your hearing aids are giving you the right amount of amplification in the right places is to have real ear measurement performed on them. Now, if you don't know what real ear measures are, I highly recommend that you watch my video that I will link in the card up here and in the description below because it is the single most important factor when fitting a pair of hearing aids to your hearing loss prescription, and I would not recommend ever getting hearing aids from anyone who doesn't use them. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.